Hey guys, welcome back. I finally have the boys gone for a few hours, so I thought I'd come in here and try and make something. I found something on Etsy that I just fell in love with. Um, it is considered copper turquoise oyster, or oyster copper turquoise. And these were the beads that I found. And it's just full of color. I mean, you've got like a dark orange, like a red orange. You've got a regular orange. you got turquoise, and then you've got this kind of like greenish turquoise. And I've noticed in this one, there's a lot more white. So there's a lot of bands of white. But some don't have that white on it. So... What I did to do the white was, I didn't want to put straight white because then it made it really bright. So I just took a little bit of white and I added it to our translucent. We are using Cernit. I actually got the replacement for all the clay that was really hard. So I'm really pleased with that. So now we get to play with it and see how well it works. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do a flower. <clears throat> so... This is going to have to work for now. But anyways, I'm going to pull these two colors out. And this, I don't think I'm going to put a mixative in there. I may. Um, like I said, I took the just some Prima White. Uh, I just need a blade that's clean. Yeah, my house is destroyed. My office, I've got stuff doesn't matter what direction you look at there's stuff as I assemble and get ready for the show which is in eight more days so I've been assembling um, I haven't packaged yet and I haven't priced yet so after tomorrow that's what I'll be doing and then my sister-in-law comes on Wednesday and then we'll just go pick up stuff that we might need that we didn't think of. Okay, so the only thing I hate wearing gloves for this is because I don't want to take it off after every color. So I'm just mixing this up. And I'm going to put at least one glove on. All right, so this right here is Sunset Orange. So believe it or not, this is going to be the lighter orange. I'm not going to try and use so much that I saturate everything like normal. And in those pictures, the chips were a little big. So I'm going to leave some of these big. Okay, so we're just going to do that, and then on this batch right here, we're going to use the darker orange, and this is the Valencia orange, which is more of a red orange. pretty sure I have some copper leaf. I bought one of those things from Amazon where they're all kind of mixed up. Okay, it's got a really nice color going on this one too. So we're just going to keep turning around and adding spots. Okay. Now we're going to try and wipe the orange off my hand. <clears throat> Let me grab some alcohol. I woke up a little congested this morning, so... It usually means I'm working myself a little hard, which is always pretty much typical when it comes to shows. Turquoise. I'm gonna see I'm really 
turquoise, does it? Okay, I'm going to mix that up. And then, of course, we got to let this dry, which is good because I'm working on orders. So I'll go fill those while this is drying. And then that way I don't have to worry about leaving every couple of minutes to check on my prints. No, I don't want to do sailboat blue. So I'm just going to go add just a tad more turquoise here. <clears throat> and over here, oh, I didn't want Laguna, did I? Oh, I did. I'm sorry. My mind went blank there. I did want the Laguna. Now, you could take all your alcohol inks and stuff like that and put it in your translunate, run through the pasta machine, and then cut it up in strips. The reason I just do this stuff so that it's on top is so that after we're done cutting it, the inside is still translucent, so it's not a solid color. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if you went through the pasta machine, it would be solid. It would be solid this color, which might not be too bad. But I like that translucent. That gives it a little bit of depth. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's why I never, I never do it that way. Now, since we do have white running through this, I'm still going to add, and I don't have the one I want. This is a snow cat, cap. It's a mixative. I like the pinata white. I don't like the snow cap. I don't think that gives you enough coverage. But we're just going to add a little bit of this. Since we've already mixed regular Primo white with this translucent. Okay. Alrighty guys, so we're going to let this dry, and as soon as it does, we will come back and get it all nice and ready to slice. We'll talk to you then. Bye. Well, we are back. We're not quite dry, but I think we're dry enough to try this. So, I'm debating whether I want to put some gloves on. I'm probably not, because it's just easier. And I'm looking through my foil here and I see a lot of gold but not a lot of hot a lot of copper in there so for now what we're gonna do I put this in between a paper towel to help it dry a little faster it did seem to work but it kind of stuck together I could chop it up, but it's easier with the fingers. I'll do that later. Here's some of the blues. Okay, and we're basically just going to kind of Mix everything up now. <clears throat> I have another video on this. It's a spiny oyster turquoise. That was the first oyster turquoise that I made. And I just absolutely love this stuff. You can make some really pretty cabs with it. Um, just some regular earrings. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do with it. And it always gives you a different look. All right, so we're just going to do that. Okay, so now let's wipe our hands. We may get a little bit of gold in here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to separate the, the copper real easy. Putting it in a bag was probably dumb. It wants to stick to the bag. And I might have to order some more copper. This was just like a mixture of it. Oh, look at that. That might actually work. 
I don't think I'm going to need all of this, but... Very interesting. <clears throat> it's a little bit of gold every now and then. You'll see a little flake of it here and there. Don't need a whole lot, but I like that little bling. All right, so I'm going to put this big piece away. Okay. So, now you do your regular, and that's just kind of bunch it all up into a little square. Just making sure I've got enough orange here, orange there, you know, and blue, just so that it's all mixed up. And then the fun part, squaring it up. be able to see it after it um, comes out of the oven <clears throat> I don't know if I have time to make anything with it I do want to make something with it before the show but I don't know if people actually buy cabs when I'm in Vegas doing my glass shows you know I don't bring a whole bunch of jewelry because people are basically in there for the beads I don't think I've ever made cabs for that. But this show, it's mostly jewelry because there's not a whole lot of designers out here. Or at least not that I know of. I would hope there are now because of the pandemic. It created a lot of do-it-yourselfers. So there might be a lot more people that are out there designing. So I'll make sure that I bring my loose beads and the stuff like that. I'm probably going to bring all my polymer clay beads that I haven't done anything with, which usually means I'm not really impressed with them. You know, and just throw them in bags and put a little price on them. So that would be kind of cool if I got rid of all my stash that way. Most of those beads were made last year, and they're not, I mean, they're quality, but they're just ugly. <laughs> It was when I was fairly new to this, and they weren't all perfect. Okay, so this, I have to admit, is forming into a square a lot easier. I don't know if it's the translucent, um, but usually when you get leaf in there, it doesn't like to stick to itself. And so you always get these air pockets, but I'm not seeing any of those. So it's definitely a good day for a cane. All right, so now we're just gonna make this beautiful. For no reason, because it's all gonna be sliced into anyways. <clears throat> and I don't think we're gonna be cutting shapes out. We might. I didn't have any seasoned earrings because I usually don't go for themed. Uh oh, that didn't sound good. Oh, I gotta pause really quick. I just ran out of the important stuff on my printer. So before that runs out, let me add some more. Be right back. Alrighty, we are back. So we're gonna find a blade after the show. I definitely have to order me some more of these. So I'm running out, and I'm just going to try and get four pieces fairly, well, okay, five pieces. 
same size. Uh, I'm not seeing all the copper I wanted to see. I don't know. Part of me is thinking of cutting it up one more time with copper on it. Hopefully this doesn't make a huge mistake, but I don't see enough copper running through there. So I'm going to take that big piece of copper that we had. And I'm just going to lay it on top. I'm not going everywhere with it. This is either going to destroy it or it's going to make it look good. I guess we're going to find out in a minute. I don't think it's going to destroy it actually. I think it's still going to look good. But I really would have loved to have seen a little bit more copper running through the top. I think it's funny that it all kind of stuck on the outside instead of the inside. And again, I'm really shocked that it's not separating. So, let's see what happens now. Wow. It's just amazing. It just does not want to... I guess we might have to use the back end of it here. And I'm looking for a brayer here. Gave us a few really long pieces. I was looking more for chunks. So we're going to kind of chunky them by just cutting strips up. So the cool thing with this is you can mess it up and do what you have to do, but the strips in that picture weren't strips. They were just chunks. I don't know how it came out so stripy. Let's put it in regular terms, but it didn't come out the way I was expecting. And this is only going to solidify the stripes, I think. I don't know. Well, it's not going to quite look probably like that little spiny oyster, but it's still going to be pretty. And I will work on this one uh, a couple more times. Well, I decided to stick to my brayer.
I like this better. But I don't know why it's sticking. Maybe it's the Cernet itself. I don't know if any of you use Cernet. Do you have problems with it sticking to the brayer? Because I know when I use Primo, it doesn't do that. Or Fema, for that matter. just wants to stick. Okay, so we're just going to take some paper here. I could run this through the pasta machine, but then I'm afraid that it's going to really be elongated. So basically, this is what we got. I like this side better. And this is something that I don't put a backing on because of the translucent clay. So let me see what cutters I have in front of me. Between a thousand of them. These have been my, my favorite cutters lately. So, we're going to do that. So, we have two of those. These are some smaller, rounder ones. So this one's going to be a lot of orange. That's going to be a real pretty one. So that's four. Mm, let's see if I have a dagger. I have one dagger. Oh, oh this might look good if I can get two of them. Squish all this back together and make another set of the arch right there since we only have one. I will definitely make these into earrings. kind of squishy so this clay is definitely a squishy clay so come up from the side instead of from the top or the bottom so that it doesn't distort and I'll fix those in a minute See, so this way you've got all of this now, and I lay it on top because it's going to be thinner if I try and stretch this out. So if I just add it all to the top, it'll make it thicker. And then for the tops of these, I got these little cameos. I was thinking of making that for the top, but if you see the way these came off, 
it's just really soft clay. I don't know what that is, but it's going to stay on for now. And so you have to go in here and reshape. So I think my... Oh, I really don't like that. So we're going to put him down. Can I make another one? I can. So this one's kind of a rounded edge. Because of me pulling it off the way I did, it just really took the shape completely away. Which is okay if you sand, because you can get it back into the shape that you wanted. I'm going to not move these off my thing. And those cameos are way too big. So. We're going to take them off. From the side. And that's basically just coming up like this. Off the side. And pulling them. I don't think I'll use the center piece. Yeah, I'm just having an issue with, wow, I don't know what is up with that. But I'm not going to use the center, so I'm just going to lay that down like that. And then I'm literally going to pull the center out while this is on here, and that way I don't lose that shape. Yeah, it's not a very good cut probably why it did the what it did and I'll tell you why it's not the cutter per se it's the way I cut it and what I mean by that yeah this is just so sticky Is if you have more than one cut, like you got your outside, but if you have an inside cut, a lot of people, they just do this and they think they're done. But when there's an inside cut, you have to cut or press down on that center cut. Because that's just as important as the other cut. And sometimes I don't do that and that's why I can't get my clay out of the cutter. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. You have to grab it, but not only do you have to cut the outside, you need to stick your hands right here in the middle because that's a separate cut. Now you do it. And it'll cut straight out. Ah, but I wasn't supposed to do that. I wasn't supposed to take it out until I put it on here. Okay, so today didn't go quite as planned. You know me, I'm going to do it again. Thank goodness I made extra. So, I'm going to cut that right there. Keep the whole thing together. <laughs> it doesn't want to. So maybe in a way it's good that it gets stuck, right? Just so I can get that perfect shape. Maybe this is just a sign saying that I've made too much. Stop. Yeah, this shape just is not coming out as I want to. So, oh well, it's going to end up being trash. 
trying to get all this done before the boys come home and might be moving a little faster than I should. And the printer behind me has stopped, which means I got to go get my cutters packaged. So they go out in the mail today. So we're going to make one more of this. You know what? Nope, we're going to do this the regular way. I have faith. Okay. And then I have one, two, three pairs that I could really use a top to. So we're just going to make some circles. And I'm not going to make these posts because they're small enough. I think I have enough to make the other two. So again, pull it from the side and you'll keep your shape. Okay. And I'm going to make a couple more of those circles. Just going to squish all this together. The only problem is the more you squish it back together. God, I don't I don't get that at all. I really don't. The more you squish together, the more you start getting muted colors. So it's not going to be as bright as that last one. Meaning it's not going to be as sharp. Yeah, I think that's good. So we're just going to go... What do I have? One two, three, because I don't think I'm going to use that arch that we did. I could. I mean, I've got enough if I wanted to. But I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it at the three. All right, so we're going to throw these in the oven, and we'll come back and show you what the good ones look like. This one, well, I don't know. Maybe we can make it into some kind of a focal. it into a Natasha bead or something. I think it's pretty muted that I'm not going to be able to do that, but we're going to try anyways. Oh yeah, it's pretty muted. But we're going to make it anyways, just because that way we get rid of it. If we use it, fantastic. If we don't, no biggie. I hate Natasha beads because I can never get them even. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and throw these in the oven. And we'll be back and show you how they look. Talk to you then. Bye. We're back. Our stuff is still in the oven. But I'm going to be pulling that out in a few minutes. And I know a lot of you have been asking about some of my finished products. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. So remember that one we made with the gold? I'll show you that one. But we made a smaller one. And we used copper. I don't know how good this gray is on a background. Let me see if I find some printer paper that I could use. Maybe that'll be a little bit easier to see it. So this is... The way I measured these is from the centerpiece. So this is um, one and a half inches, and the other one that I made was, I think it was one and three quarters. There it is. So we ended up going with the smaller gold chain, and you can see there's a big difference there. So that's a 175. So anyways, that's the one with the copper. And I'm going to tangle these, aren't I? 
And this is our finished piece with the gold. I don't know how well this is coming out on camera. Hopefully you can see it. It hangs beautifully when it's on the neck. I really like that. Okay, so that's two. And then these are some glass bracelets we made. This is a crocus and a Caribbean blue. Little charms over here. I might put more. I don't know. I might just leave it. And I think I've already shown you that one with the orange and the hibiscus flowers from um, Czech glass. I got a bunch of these little ones. Uh, I've only made a couple more since I showed you last. So we have our pink. We have our Caribbean blue. And we have our olive and a pink. We have another bracelet. Yes, I'm very symmetrical. I hate it. So I need to really, really change that. There's a couple more. These are the ones that my granddaughter helped with, believe it or not. We try to wrap these all kinds of different ways. And she liked just the chain and the dangles on the bottom. I'm not much of a dangle person. And then these. These are probably my favorite just because of the colors in them. Okay, so this was a Mak Makumigani cane. And that one is in copper. And I dropped the other one. It's got the gold finish. And it's the carrot gold. And so it's not so yellow. And then we have another one like that. I haven't put the ends on it yet. Okay. So I just got to put the earring clasp on the back. And... We got some round ones, just some donuts. These were fun. And if you look at that, you can see all that gold and more of a brass look to it. So I just finished it off with some brass findings and some ear wires. These were weird. I don't know if I really like them. I don't like the gold again. It's just very bright. Now, if I could have gotten the gold from the leaf, that would have been a beautiful gold. So, just a little bit of like a cathedral window, which, yes, all these are cutters of mine. And some of the leaves. So, look for um, a window pane, long, or a cathedral window. Here's my other gray one that matched that other gray. So this was everything that I've made this week. Now we're still having problems figuring out how we're going to package everything and and stuff like that. So here's some. Um, I think I made this glass focal video for you on YouTube. So basically it was just impression jasper. And out of glass I made little coral beads and etched them. And... I, this is all glass as well. I found like an icy blue, which was close enough to that, with some ivory. Those were the shards that we blew. We have a bunch of wrap bracelets, because everybody loves wrap bracelets. But I don't know if I'm going to sell this one. My daughter fell in love with it. And I put a little glass, little sea bead on the end of it. This I can't sell, because it's not anything homemade on that. And then, let's see what else we've got. We've got a couple bracelets. I've got to figure out different cards. But these were the cards I had. They're too thin. I changed my name. And so it's not the Creative Dork anymore. It's just going to be Rini's Art. I changed my Etsy store. And that's probably what I'm going to end up using. Because I could not think of a name for the life of me. This was a Potomac bead. Um, it was a tutorial I did from there. I love it. It's a little older. It's more vintage. Then we have like some boho styles. With a little dangle on the bottom. This was another Potomac bead. 
video and it's just very summery and I really like that one and then we have some like really big stuff right here so it's that one there's more of that impression Jasper this was um, a bead kit. Potomac Beads gives out bead kits every month. And it's got two patterns in it. And so you just follow the pattern. So we've got a few of those. This was just a fun one that I created. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just using um, Zuli beads. Uh, these are all check and a dagger. Just a little simple necklace. And then we have a couple like this. And we got some really southwestern ones. These beads were purchased from Sam's Bead Shop. Carries a lot of check and a lot of fun beads. So I like that one. This is a two-part necklace. Yeah, see all of these are falling off because of the fact that they're just not really wide and thick. So I'm going to have to change all these cards now. But that's just another one with a tree of life pendant there on the bottom. Uh, we got a couple more. This was my Vegas purse. <laughs> I made this for me and my do my sister in law for good luck. This is just a um, it's just a beaded purse that's been sitting in my arsenal forever. So I made a couple. You can just put a a penny or a dime in there for good luck. Kind of superstitious, I know. And then this is just a simple one. So these are all that we've created now. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff that has been made for years. Um, and those I have to take out now and clean all the silver and do all that fun stuff. But that's just a little bit of what we got. And I found this little box. I don't know if you can see it my yeah i can show you around here but everything that i need is out on the floor and that way i don't have to go into there and try and find everything but yeah it's it's pretty bad in here but i found these at hobby lobby and they were on sale there we go so you can only put so many displays on two cable so basically what i did was i'm going to put as much as i can on displays and then I'm just going to line these up um, in the box like that. Because I know last year people loved to like just rummage through everything. So this way they can kind of look at everything. We'll see how that goes. And then I can price it on the back. But that's what I have been up to. And let me let you go now. And I will come back with um, everything I'm about to pull out of the oven. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so we're back, and while I was waiting, I'm putting together a bunch of jewelry, so I'm hiding that from you, because it is a mess. So, I pulled these out, I've already resined them, and I just wanted to show you what they look like. So on these, we're probably just going to put a pinch bale in there, so I'll drill a hole, throw a pinch bale, and an ear wire. So, I hope you like those, and you guys have a great day, we'll talk to you soon.